When it comes to emulation handhelds under $100, there are plenty of amazing devices to choose from. Then there's the MiU Mini, a device so good, so special, that I consider it to be an absolute masterpiece. Since its release almost two years ago, the MiU Mini has remained one of the most coveted emulation handhelds on the market. Unfortunately, MiU has not been able to satisfy the insane demand, and for the last six months, the Mini has been almost constantly out of stock. Which brings us to the elephant in the room, and that's the MiU Mini Plus. Why should we even bother talking about the older, less available MiU Mini when we could talk about its successor? I mean, not only does the Mini Plus have all the same capabilities as the original Mini, it has a larger screen, a larger battery, and a Wi-Fi chip. And most importantly, you can easily buy it right now. It's readily available on Amazon and a bunch of other websites. But despite all these advantages, I keep finding myself picking up the original MiU Mini. And for me, that largely comes down to the difference in size. The Mini Plus is more comparable to Ambernick's RG35XX. They're both substantially larger. And while they are decently portable, they're not nearly as pocketable as the original MiU Mini. I actually forgot just how dramatic the difference was between the MiU Mini and the 35XX. It wasn't until I played them back to back that I realized just how much smaller the MiU Mini was. But it's not too small. The MiU Mini hits a sweet spot where it's small enough that you can take it basically anywhere, while being just big enough that it's not uncomfortable to play on. Like its larger cousins, it has a vertical Game Boy inspired layout, which has always been my preference. The design does have a pretty big flaw though, but for me, it's not a deal breaker. The shoulder buttons are completely useless. I mean, they work, but they're an absolute ergonomic nightmare and they aren't clicky at all. They feel generally terrible to use. So you might be wondering, how can I call the MiU Mini a masterpiece when it has such a glaring issue? Well, something I've realized after trying out so many handhelds is that we shouldn't expect one device to be the perfect choice for every scenario. The MiU Mini can emulate PlayStation games just fine, but I'd much rather use my RG35XX. The 35XX and the Mini Plus have larger screens, which makes it easier to enjoy the more complex graphics of the PS1, and their larger physical footprints are more comfortable for long play sessions. And for me, PlayStation games typically aren't something I pick up for a few minutes and play while I'm out of the house. I prefer to settle in and savor them. What makes the MiU Mini such a masterpiece it's just how great it feels to play both 8 and 16-bit games on it. Games that are meant to be played on the go. Games that are meant to be played on a handheld. So what exactly can we play on this thing? Well, with its 1.2 gigahertz processor and 128 megabytes of RAM, like I said earlier, you'll be able to emulate everything up to and including the PS1. The MiU Mini does come preloaded with a bunch of ROMs, but if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I always recommend curating your own library of games that you'll actually play. I plan on making a video in the future on how to decide what games to put on emulation devices and how to rip your ROMs from your own physical library. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you can be notified when that video comes out. I also recommend that you skip the provided firmware altogether. I mean, it's fine, but for the best experience, just buy a nice SD card and install Onion OS. It supports over 100 emulators, which is probably more than you'll ever need. It has autosave and quick resume functionality, a built-in theme selector so you can customize the look and feel of the OS, an activity tracker, retro arch settings, and even dedicated ports of over 30 games. Onion OS is the standard by which every other custom operating system should be compared to. Setting it up is super easy and you're given a ton of flexibility in exactly what emulators and features you want to enable. I could probably dedicate an entire video to talking about Onion OS, but for now I'll drop a link below to a great setup guide by Retro Game Core so you can check it out too. Now, with Onion OS supporting over a hundred different emulators, it's not feasible for me to talk about each and every possible console that you can play on the Mini. But what I will do is go over the consoles that I think yield the best experience for a handheld of this size. Let's start with the most obvious choice, and that's handheld games. As expected, Game Boy and Game Boy Color games feel right at home on the MiU Mini. The vertical layout of the device makes it feel just like a tiny Game Boy. 
And with Onion OS, there are a ton of screen filters and color options to choose from, but I mostly stick with the iconic green of the original Game Boy DMG. You definitely can't go wrong with classic games like Tetris or Pokemon, and platformers also play really well on the Mini. If you haven't checked out Avenging Spirit, it's a Game Boy game that I highly recommend playing. It's super fun. Game Boy Advance games, as expected, also run just fine on the Mini. And even though GBA games use a 3x2 aspect ratio, they still look great on the Mini's 4x3 screen. You shouldn't run into any issues with the majority of the GBA library, just make sure to watch out for any games that require heavy use of the shoulder buttons. I always recommend Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, which is probably one of my favorite games on the entire system. I spent a surprising amount of time playing Neo Geo Pocket Color games on the Miu Mini. Over the last couple of years, I've picked up a few games here and there, but I never really got around to playing them. And I'll be honest, this thing really impressed me. It is hands down the best fighting games ever made for a handheld. I couldn't believe just how fun and natural it felt to pull off some of these combos. If you've never tried any Neo Geo Pocket Color games, I absolutely recommend you load some onto the Miu Mini. They're the perfect games for this device. As we move up to the 16-bit consoles, the Miu Mini continues to impress. Sega Genesis games look and feel amazing on this device. The only time I ran into some issues was when I tried games that supported the six-button Genesis controller. Mortal Kombat 3, for instance, has high punch and high kick mapped to the shoulder buttons, making it really hard to pull off certain moves or combos. One of my favorite games of all time, Rocket Knight Adventures, has some of the best pixel art of the 16-bit generation, and it looks incredible on the Miu Mini's IPS LCD screen. Super Nintendo performed just as well. I've heard that some Super FX2 games run at a slightly slower speed, but I didn't really notice it and I rarely play those games anyways. Overall, when it comes to the two big 16-bit consoles, the Miu Mini knocks it out of the park once again. Next, I want to look at something a little different and check out some arcade emulation on the Mini. And like everything else we've looked at thus far, the Miu Mini easily handled all the arcade games that I threw at it. The only thing I'll mention and continue to mention is that any fighting games that require use of the shoulder buttons just are not going to feel great. So sorry X-Men vs Street Fighter, but this just isn't the handheld for you. And the last console we're going to take a look at today is the Sony PlayStation. Obviously the Mini doesn't have any analog sticks, so games that require them are out of the question. Performance-wise, not everything runs perfectly, but the majority of games are totally playable. And to be honest, I had a pretty good time playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater on the Mini, which honestly surprised me considering how small the device is. I just didn't think it was going to be comfortable. If you tailor your library to the device, there's definitely a lot of fun to be had playing 2D games or RPGs. But if your main focus is to get the best PS1 experience above everything else, then I would probably recommend something other than the Miu Mini. You could say that the Miu Mini is a jack of all trades. It does so many things so well. The screen is great, the size is great, to me, it's a masterpiece because it's the console that I want to take with me everywhere I go. It plays all the games that I want to play, has a form factor that I love, software that is second to none, and a community that's always trying to find new ways to improve it and make it even better. While other devices have attempted to replicate its success, and don't get me wrong, those devices are great in their own ways, nothing has managed to recreate the magic of the Miu Mini.